considered to be the most amazing motion picture ever made. It is often used as a litmus test. Men have tested their girlfriends with this movie. If you like this movie, we will keep going out. If not, see you later, alligator. And I kind of get that. I, I get that. I mean, darkness, yeah. Uh, I have memories. Uh, not real good ones of this movie. Uh, I'm glad people like it. Because um, I married my wife just before this movie, and we almost got divorced during the movie. She was the costume designer. This movie was a nightmare pretty much for everybody. Um, this movie failed at the box office and killed the entire franchise for 25 years. Yeah, hope you like it. Hope you like it. Um, this is the only motion picture financed by a studio that I have ever starred in. After this, they were like, nah, we're good. We're good. He can go do crap like Bubba Hotep, which is fine by me, too. Um, so, this movie's many things to many people. Uh, Frank out the winch. Yes, nice, obscure reference. Appreciate that. Uh, who, who's, seen, who's seen the movie a lot? Like, a lot, a lot. That's fine. I need, I need some numbers. Wow. 50. Uh, over here, how many? 37. How do you, okay, how do you, you said 37? How do you, how do you know? Do you have a little journal? Add lasagna tonight, watch the of darkness. How do you know? How do you keep track? Every Christmas. Okay. Merry Christmas to you, sir. So I heard 70 something up here. 72. 72. Uh, how do you know 72? How do you know? You're on my media server. Your media, your media server. All right, don't be so angry, sir. Don't, it's all right. It's going to be okay. Uh, almost more fun. Who's who's never seen you? A fair amount. A fair amount. Her hand went, went back down. No, I, I caught you, lady. Uh, who are you here with? Who's he? My husband. Your husband. What, what's his name? Michael, who loves you. Yeah, we don't really care about him. Uh, so did, did he say, let's go, let's go see this movie? I bought the tickets to come because he does love you. You bought the tickets to come because he does love you. Me, does he love you? <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. What did he do? You, have you seen the other Evil Dead movies? I've seen every one you've made. Every one I've made. Except this one. I've seen, I've seen the newest one, but you're not in it. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> what, did, what did he tell you about this movie? He's made me watch every one, and I, I, I love No, them. I'm talking about this movie, the one you have not seen. What did he tell you about it? Sir, it's your turn. What did you tell her about this movie? I told what, her it rules. I told her it's bloody as gory and it's the best movie ever. Bloody and gory. This is this is this movie has talking skeletons. Sir. <laughs> We're very concerned about getting a rating. First two Evil Dead movies did not have any rating whatsoever. They are unrated movies to this day. So we submit this one to the ratings board. Then they go, oh wait a minute, this is Evil Dead three, isn't it? Well, yeah, I got kind of. They go, oh now you want a rating. Now you want to read it. NC-17. Yeah, what? Exactly. That is our reaction. This movie, like a nine-year-old would think this movie is kind of dumb. <laughs> NC-17, we go, what should we cut out? They go, it's the cumulative effect. What a crock of shit answer. Oh, my God. The same year, Goodfellas comes out. <laughs> Opening scene of Goodfellas, Joe Pesci's driving. The fuck is that? The fuck is that? They get out. They open the trunk. There's a guy bound against his will. They already tried to kill him. Joe Pesci takes a knife. Hey, you fucking guy! You fucking guy! I got a leg. I got a wing. You fucking guy. R rated. <laughs> Bullshit. It's just bullshit. So that's fine. So, you, so this is an unrated movie, okay? It's unrated. Watch out. Watch out. It's those talking skeletons will stay with you forever. Oh <laughs> <laughs> God, what are they thinking? That's all right. Uh, anybody have any questions about this movie? It doesn't doesn't actually have to be about this movie. Yes, sir. Hey, Bruce. Yes. My man here has never seen this movie. Your man here has never seen the movie. Never seen it. I actually had him watch it for the first time. Yeah. This is one of my favorite movies. So is, it, is there a question <laughs> hidden in there somewhere? <laughs> what is it? What exercises can I do to get a chin? Like that? <laughs> what exercises can I do? Okay, that was a dumb question. <laughs> I'm full of dumb <laughs> Not going to happen. Yes, ma'am, right there. My favorite of the series. Oh no, I got it, I got it. No, I have no favorites. They were all fucking miserable, man. All of them. <laughs> all of them. And it's, I apologize to say that. This was uh, 103 days of filming where I wish my mother never met my father. <laughs> I have zero sympathy for any actor on the planet because of this movie. <laughs> was my favorite then? Uh, absolutely none of them, man. None of them. But ma'am, why is it important? Because do you like this one the most? You're an Evil Dead 2 person. Oh. <laughs> so would, would you prefer that I say Evil Dead 2? Yes. My favorite is Evil Dead 2. <laughs> so sincere. So sincere. I hesitate to do balconies, but we should try it occasionally. Yeah, way up, way up. Sure, somebody. What show? Ash vs. Evil Dead. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah, you know, the one that you pirated like a mother scratcher. <laughs> it is the most pirated, most pirated series on the interwebs. Thanks for nothing, man. <laughs> you took the 30 day free trial on Stars, didn't you? You binge watched it all, delete. <laughs> you know what happened to that show? Don't give me your indignant nature now. Where are you? Where are you, man? I right, now let him speak before I berate him again. Yes, sir. I apologize. What? What are you trying to say? Will we ever see Pablo Kelly and Brandy again? Pablo Kelly and Brandy again? I don't know because we have to see. If you see Evil Dead Rise seventy-eight more times, perhaps. <laughs> It's all in success. It's all in success. Things happen. Things happen. Sure, right there. Yes, sir. Who chose the song Space Truckin'? Who chose the song Space Truckin' for Ash vs. Evil Dead? Uh, someone. <laughs> I don't know who. 
It could have been our composer, Jill Dukin. But it was fun in that show. We used a lot of those sort of B-side rock and roll numbers. And it was a good fit, I thought, for that show. Yeah, that nobody watched. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right here. Did I like being in Cars 2? <laughs> yes, ma'am, I sure did, because it had nothing to do with this movie whatsoever. <laughs> come into Cars 2, you come into a lovely little studio, meet John Lasseter. Hi, John, hi. Have some donuts and some tea. You want some peppermint tea? <laughs> okay, let's do a tape. Hey, I'm Rod Redline. Hey, that was fun. I'd like some more donuts and tea? And let's take a break, because it's hard work. <laughs> All, if, if you're an actor, always say yes to doing cartoons because kids will watch that cartoon a million times. You always get residuals as long as it's being watched. So yeah, like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Yeah, that's my favorite. That part is always being watched. All of uh, yes, up, up in the balcony. Be careful up there. You guys are getting too perilous. Yes, sir. Mr. Two hands up. Yes. Can I explain that? Yes, I can. Yes. We would get very bored if we did the same bullshit over and over and over again. <laughs> Plus, honestly, it sort of goes like this. The first movie came out, it was successful, but people fainted. I mean, a woman was raped by a tree, for God's sake. <laughs> the actress was not harmed, she got a little case of Dutch home disease. <laughs> but that movie was very, it, it, it rubbed some people the wrong way. We thought, okay, let's make a movie called Crime Wave, our second movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why we made Evil Dead 2. <laughs> that thing dropped like a stone. Sam goes, maybe Ash didn't die at the end of Evil Dead 1. <laughs> so we did Evil Dead 2. The guy who co-wrote that is a guy named Scott Spiegel, who was a complete fan of the Three Stooges. I mean, he would call Larry Fine, the frizzy-haired guy. He'd call him in the old actor's home. He was such a fan and talk to him. So the, the movie was infused with a lot of what we call splat stick. It's horror and comedy. It's a weird genre, but it can work. Uh, and then we made some other, something else. And, and when it, Army of Darkness, this movie is a result of being big fans of the movie The Vikings with Kirk Douglas. Like it's got, it's got guys attacking castles and ramming drawbridges and Kirk and all the Vikings, they're throwing axes at the drawbridge as a ladder and then Kirk Douglas jumps and he grabs him. It says, we thought, let's, let's try an epic. Let's try an epic Evil Dead. That's not as, more like a Ray Harryhausen movie with stop motion and skeletons and armies of the dead. And then we went so horribly over budget <laughs> trying to do that. Another happy memory, another, another happy memory. So that's sort of the evolution. And if you want to make sense out of the three movies together, Cut the recaps out. The only reason those dumb recaps are there is because no movie had the rights to the previous movie's footage because they were made by three different companies. So in Evil Dead 2, people think Ash is dumb enough to go back to the cabin with new friends. <laughs> he's pretty dumb, but he's not that dumb. Are we sure about that? And basically the end of Evil Dead 2, when he lands in the gravel pit, is when this movie should start. So forget the recap for this one, too. Just imagine that Ash lands after being sucked into the vortex. That would make the most sense. So that's the basic evolution. So I hope that's satisfying. Do, 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 like do we consider doing the second movie as pure horror? No, no. We, did, we were not interested in that. That's why it's kind of a weird, different movie that just... Works great on marijuana. <laughs> That's Charlie Sheen's favorite thing. Smoke a doobie and watch Charlie Evil Dead 2. Charlie Sheen! I, mean, I, I, I get that. Uh, anyway. Yes, a waving. Yes, something in your hand. Yes. Wow, you're in a different county. I'll, I'll get to you in a second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How much what? How much was I paid for the Evil Dead movies? What's your social security number? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? None of your goddamn business. <laughs> uh, 
on the first Evil Dead, I made $35 a week. What? Oh, no. He's lying. But we own the movie. I hope he's lying. Army of Darkness is dying. again. Yes, sir, right here. Physical comedy, sure. Um, doing these dumb things, you hurt yourself all the time. Uh, in this movie, I flipped a stunt guy down a set of stairs, and the breastplate jammed into my face and cut my chin. And I looked down, it's covered with blood, and a crew member goes, Hey, you're bleeding. I'm like, Yeah, thanks, but I don't want to see that. So I went to the hospital, dressed as Ash with the cape and everything. I had so many fake cuts in my face that the makeup woman used a template. That she put over it and it had all the marks so she could put them all in the right place. Rob Caffrey, the producer, goes, send Bruce, make sure there's like a plastic surgeon there in case he has to do anything, you know. I meet with the guy, he looks at me, he goes, which one is it? I'm like, ha ha, you can't tell. <laughs> Pretty good, huh, Doc? So he stitched me up it was, and it was just another damn cut on my face. We didn't lose one minute of, of filming. So... Everybody got hurt on these movies. Everybody got hurt. I'm, I'm... Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's talk about my chin. Uh, this movie's weird. You know, there were lots of extras. Um, we had people in rubber suits, and two people who were dressed in, uh, as skeletons were caught having sex behind the castle. <laughs> Yeah, they were, oh, they were boning each other, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's a strange experience. Yes, ma'am, over here. Yes, ma'am. You're engaged. Will I perform your marriage ceremony? Well, first of all, I've enjoyed all of my marriages. Um, we'll, we'll talk. I don't do that a lot. I did it during the, during the game show, during this tour. So it, it has happened. I am a ordained minister in the eternal church of the lightness of being, of genericness, whatever, on the interweb. So, it, it is fun to marry people. Yes, man with hat. Yes. Man with hat. You're a man with bottle. Yeah. Yes, man with hat. How do we decide on the one-liner groovy? How do we decide on the one-liner groovy that started in Evil Dead 2? Uh, that was during the 80s, during the Reagan era, and Groovy was about the farthest thing from Groovy that you could possibly do. So Sam wanted to use a word that was not even allowed in the 80s, Groovy. And then it, because, so he wanted him to use something that was not hip. So that's why where Groovy was born. Yes, sir, right here. Evil Dead Rive, sure. Is that Ash in that part? What is that part? Go ahead and spoil it. He's... Hey, it's been out it's not going to wreck anything. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. That's all right. What do you... My voice is in the mood. My voice is in the mood. It's not Ash. It's just my voice. Yeah, in the middle. There's my two hands. Yes. Have I ever told Sam no? You try and tell him no. <laughs> He's an amazing guy. He's a dear friend and the best director I'll probably ever work with. But this is an example of Sam Raimi, directing. He's doing a, a western called Quick and the Dead. Same time, I was doing The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. I'm like, holy shit. We're both, Sam and I are both making westerns. My high school buddy is making one in old Tucson and I'm on the Warner Brothers back lot. I had one day, one day off. I go to visit him so we can sit behind the monitor and laugh and watch him direct Gene Hackman and Sharon Stone and Russell Crowe and Leonardo DiCaprio. All these movie stars. The second I get there, the second he sees me, he goes, come on, I need you. <laughs> I'm like, Sam, don't. I don't, I'm just here to hang out. And he goes, no, no, shut up, I need you. He shows me into wardrobe. Make him look like he used to have money. <laughs> now he doesn't, he slipped in the ditch. Make him look like he pissed himself. He's a bum, make him look like a bum, I'll be right back. 
<laughs> so they go, okay. So I get some dumb outfit, he grabs me. Come on, we're going to make up. Shows me and he goes, all right. This guy's got syphilis and whatever. He, you know, give him a sore on his lip, he should be dirty and his hair needs to be really greasy. I mean really greasy. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so let me preface this. Actors can be a pain in the ass sometimes. And there was a guy on, in, the, in the cast named Pat Hingle. He was a very famous character actor. He'd been around forever. Tons of credit. Westerns, always playing a bartender or a mayor or something. So he's, he's, in, he's in the movie, and his daughter in The Quick and the Dead kind of gets shoved off to like this, really this pimp type guy into prostitution. And he's, as an actor, he's pissed. He doesn't feel like he did anything about it. So he's following Sam around for weeks. Sam, Sam, my character doesn't do anything about my daughter getting taken into prostitution. That's absurd. Sam's like, oh boy, Jesus, give it a break, man trying to direct this movie. So, Sam grabs me out of makeup, brings me onto set. There's Pat Hingle waiting to go. Sam goes, hey Pat, remember that great idea you had about defending your daughter? We're gonna do that right now. See this guy here, Pat? He's like a stunt guy, don't worry, don't worry about him. <laughs> Now what he's going to do, Pat, he's going to come up to your daughter right here and go, Hey, girly girl, you and me are going to do the devil's dance. <laughs> I started laughing because I thought it was a really stupid line. and said, oh, shut up, shut up. <laughs> and then, Pat, after he says that, you come up behind him and you grab her on the neck and you pull him away and you spin him around and you kick him in the ass. And I mean kick him in the ass. Don't worry about that guy. So... Ten takes later. <laughs> After each take, Sam goes, Pat, I didn't believe that. <laughs> I didn't think you meant that. Pat goes, can I go again? Sure, give it a try. <laughs> my neck is broken. I have a permanent, like, depression in my ass. And cut. Pat, great work, great work. Pat marches off the set. Best day he ever had on a film set. Sam walks past me, he goes, I'm not even going to develop the negative. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a dear friend. That is a good dear friend. That fucking guy. He did this over and over and over again. We're going to shoot a scene in this movie where I kiss M. Beth Davids. She went on from this to being Schindler's List, by the way. <laughs> now you train him in horror. So I'm about to kiss her, and we can't find Sam anywhere. We hear him giggling. Off to the side. Hee hee hee. Whatever dumb laugh he has. He comes out, he says, he says to me, I know what you're going to say to her. I'm like, I, I, I don't say anything, I just kiss her. He goes, no, no. You're going to say, give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> Like that's the dumbest line I've ever heard. You go, shut up, you're gonna say it, you're gonna say it. Say it like a minion. So it's in the movie, it's in there. Uh, that's what Sam would do. He would just throw lines out while the camera's rolling. Here's a new one, here's a new one, here's a new one. But I do know that Give Me Some Sugar Baby has power. Some some quotes, words have meaning. Um, guy came up to me years later and goes, hey, thanks for giving me some sugar baby. I'm like, yeah, why? He goes, well, I did a job in, in China, in Beijing. And I had, I had Give Me Some Sugar Baby translated into Mandarin, went into a bar, used it on a Chinese chick, and got laid. <laughs> it works. Try it, guys. <laughs> and then run. Yeah. We'll do a few more, and then we'll let you watch this modern-day classic. Uh, yeah, right here. The easiest what? The easiest movie? Easiest Evil Dead. Again, we're back to that topic again. There's no easy Evil Dead. Easiest? No, no, no. There's no category like that. It doesn't even have an easiest category. Why should something be easy? My theory is if a movie is easy to make, it's hard to watch. The audience can tell. The audience can tell if you've actually worked your nuts off, because that's what this movie's all about. 
So, I don't know. Uh, a couple more. Uh, let's try it. One. Try the balcony. Yeah, my favorite. Yes, somebody. Work it out. <laughs> you turned 21 at midnight. You sound drunk already. <laughs> You know, you're, you're a dumbass because uh, <laughs> you're trying to get me arrested, basically. <laughs> oh yeah, let's get you drunk before you're, before you're... No, 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 at midnight, sir. <laughs> I'm not staying up that late, I have no news for it, but I'm a geezer. No. No, well, you're coming down from your meth fuel high. <laughs> <laughs> that for sure, but we are in Indiana. <laughs> I live in the town of Medford, Oregon, and they call it Methford. Anytime you see a guy without, walking without a shirt at midnight like he's late to a meeting, that's meth. <laughs> oh, it's a happy drug. Eight hour high, meth. You get really horny, but you can't do anything about it. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking nightmare to me. And then you start to feel the shit under your skin. We have four mug shots and a billboard that says meth. Not even once. And it shows a woman who, she, first she's like a, it's like a DUI picture. She's a little disoriented. The next one, she has scabs all over her face because she's trying to find the things under her skin. Um, the next one, her teeth are now like a pirate's teeth because she's smoking it. She's getting meth mouth, where it removes the enamel from your teeth. That's a sweetheart drug right there. And the fourth one, her face is imploding, like, a, like Army of Darkness, basically. Not even once, sir. Not even once. Hey, I want to I wanna leave you by thanking you for supporting this theater and this event and everything like that. Honestly, uh, for the last 40 years, if it wasn't for you, I'd be hanging out with jerks like that. <laughs> so, I want you to know very sincerely on behalf of Sam Raimi and Rob Capper, thank you for that support. God bless you.
demon resurrection passages. It was never meant for the world of the living. The book awoke something dark in the woods. It took Linda. And then it came for me. It got into my hand and it went bad. So I lapped it off at the wrist. But that didn't stop it. It came back.